Since the beginning of Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine, the country's president, Vladimir Zelensky, has repeatedly referred to Russia's deadly attacks on Ukrainians as a genocide. On March the 2nd, in a press conference, he said that Russia's actions were genocide and Nazism. On March 9th, after the bombing of a maternity hospital in Mariupol, he said that the attack was conclusive evidence that what is happening is genocide of Ukrainians. On Sunday, that came to a head when he spoke to lawmakers in Israel, where he didn't just call the invasion a genocide, but directly tied it to the Holocaust. Ви пам'ятаєте це і впевнений ніколи не забудете. Але почуєте, що звучить зараз в Москві. Почуєте, як там кажуть знову ці слова. Остаточне рішення, але вже по відношенню, так би мовити, до нас, до українського питання. Though Zelensky is himself Jewish, the comparison was poorly received in Israel. The country's prime minister, Naftali Bennett, said it is forbidden to compare anything to the Holocaust. And Yad Vashem, Israel's national Holocaust memorial, said it condemns this trivialization and distortion of the historical facts of the Holocaust. To be clear, this entire discussion is incredibly thorny, a hugely and understandably emotive issue. The people of Ukraine are suffering through an illegal invasion and brutal occupation. It's understandable that they would refer to it in the starkest possible terms. But genocide does have a very specific legal definition. And even within the category of genocide, the Nazi Holocaust is a very specific and unique genocide. So governments not involved in a brutal war tend to try and be careful when they use the G word, as we saw in Washington, D.C. Just this, just this past week. Beyond the Holocaust, the United States has concluded that genocide was committed seven times. Today marks the eighth, as I have determined that members of the Burmese military committed genocide and crimes against humanity against Rohingya. That was Secretary of State Antony Blinken at the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum on Monday, announcing that the U.S. government finally, belatedly, has officially recognized genocide in Myanmar, five years after the violence there reached its peak in 2017. The atrocities left more than 9,000 Rohingya Muslims dead and about a million more displaced. Though Myanmar is not the first time the U.S. has been hesitant to use the term genocide, Bill Clinton famously didn't call mass killings in Rwanda a genocide when it was happening in 1994, in fear that his administration could be forced into military action to prevent those killings action he was unwilling to take, because the crime of genocide comes with certain obligations to stop it under international law. It's also why, when it comes to Russia's war on Ukraine, one expert says the term should be used carefully. Historian Waitman Wade Bourne writes, whether genocide is taking place in Ukraine should not be dismissed as a purely semantic or academic argument over terminology. The manner in which we approach mass atrocities in the current war will have implications for our reaction to genocide both now and in the future. We cannot afford to get this wrong. Joining me now is the writer of that piece, Waitman Wade Bourne. He's a Holocaust and genocide historian and a senior lecturer in history at Northumbria University in Newcastle, England. He's also a US combat veteran who served in Iraq. Thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. The United States has formally accused Russia of war crimes in Ukraine today. But a lot of Ukrainians, including guests on this show, not just their president, have used the term genocide to describe what's going on. In your view, that's not a fair description of what is happening. Why? Well, first of all, Mehdi, thanks so much for having me. Um, and I want to start, before I say anything else about this particular topic, um, by suggesting strongly that um, saying that we're not experiencing or Ukraine is not experiencing a genocide at this particular moment in time is not to minimize the very real suffering yes. that's going on there, the very real war crimes uh, that we just today had confirmation, at least from Secretary of State Blinken, that war crimes have taken place. So I want to begin with that preface. Um, but I also think it's important that we recognize that the word genocide has a legal definition um, and that some of the key components simply are not um, are not present at the moment. It's not to say that uh, Russia may not intend something in the future that, that might meet those criteria, um, but it's not something that we've seen at the moment. 
So you say in your Washington Post piece that it's so important to get this right, not to get it wrong. Why? Well, I think there's a couple of reasons. One is we need to ensure that we don't cheapen the phrase, that the phrase itself doesn't lose meaning. Um, and we've already seen some of the danger of that with Putin himself making this ridiculous claim that there is a genocide carried out by the Ukrainians, yes. right? So already there's sort of the word is, is being thrown around in ways that's not helpful. Um, but if it becomes something that the world sees and other nations see as simply sort of a pejorative term that can be used to smear an opponent, either unintentionally or intentionally, um, I think it then loses the, the sort of um, the magnitude that so we see that the term has. On that note, has it already lost that usefulness? Has it already become politicized? I wonder, has it become like terrorism, something we just apply to what our enemies are doing? We are never the terrorists. Our opponents are the terrorists. Zelensky says the Russians are committing genocide. And as you mentioned, Putin ludicrously says, no, Ukraine is committing genocide against ethnic Russians uh, in Donbass. The US would never agree with anyone who said that the invasion of Iraq was genocide or Israel's crimes against the Palestinians or Saudi Arabia's siege of Yemen. So how helpful or neutral a term is it these days? Well, I think you bring up a great point, uh, which is that, that certainly um, you can find people employing the term genocide um, that runs across the spectrum from judicious to the ludicrous. Um, however, I still think, you know, it, it does have meaning. It does have a legal definition um, from, what the, is, from the... What is that definition? Wait, just remind our viewers briefly, what is the key to that definition? The key is... Um, Acts committed with intent to destroy, uh, in whole or in part, a group of people based on national, ethnic, racial, or religious um, criteria. And then there is a okay. list of, of, of other sort of uh, actions that fall under that category. But that's sort of the basic definition. And Mike Pompeo, on his last day, one of his last days as Secretary of State, he had the U.S. State Department declare that the Chinese government's repression of its Uyghur minority is genocide. Do you agree with that view? And why do you think he did it on his way out the door? Uh, to be clear, I, th this is not my area of expertise, the, the Uyghur uh, situation in general. Um, I know that there was a group of um, legal experts that were convened within the State Department to come up with that decision. Um, I'm not in a good position to comment on whether or not I think that that's an accurate depiction. I think one of the things that we see in Ukraine, for example, is um, a blurring of the lines between things like crimes against humanity, war crimes, yeah. and genocide. And I think that's where we get some of the, in, in the Ukrainian scenario, where we get some of the, um, the ambiguity with the usage of the term. One last question before I let you go. Were you surprised at the backlash in Israel against Zelensky, a Jewish president, when he made the Holocaust comparison, because he'd already been making the genocide point. And then he said, well, this is our, this final solution's happening to us too. And there was a backlash. Uh, I, I'm not surprised. I, I do disagree with the, with the comment that it, it's, it's, it's forbidden to compare things with the Holocaust. Uh, you know, we have an entire field called comparative genocide where we do exactly that. And as you pointed out in the beginning of your segment, you know, all genocides are unique in their own ways. Um, but I think engaging in sort of the suffering of Olympics, um, yes. the Olympics of suffering rather, is not a not a helpful um, endeavor. Uh, you know, I, I understand the the sort of the anger, I suppose, in the use of the term "final yes. solution" in an area where we're not actually seeing that taking place. What we're seeing is indiscriminate killing of civilians, targeting of civilians, um, and but that's it has what makes. And that's, that's what makes everyone so emotional, as you pointed out. Whatever we call it, it's horrible what's going on. We'll have to leave it there. Waitman, Wade Bourne, thank you so much for your time and analysis. Appreciate it. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen. And make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.